as we discussed in the last class, that this class is going to be about um, how we're going to uh, propose a project, how we're going to go through this whole process. Because it's, uh, as we all of you know, that it is a major part of your learning as well. Because whatever you have learned so far, you're going to actually apply um, in this project. And um, as I told you, you have two options. One is uh, propose your own project. Or second thing, um, we will give you a default project, which will be consisting of uh, the technologies, uh, so that at the end of the class, you should be confident with what really a web information system is. So that project is going to be about searching. And we'll discuss in like uh, next class. Next next time we are going to discuss how search engine works. So basically, how web indexing works. So this class, our focus is how to really go about how you really go about doing a project systematically. So how many of you have taken class for software engineering? Yeah, great. Um, so this this kind of like um, addresses the way that approach is taken. So you guys might be knowing a uh, waterfall model, like, uh, right, like how steps are done. The same way, um, so here in the proposal, what are the key components okay, um, for a project? Idea, of course, right, number one. What is what you really want to do? It's the part of the problem. Then, <clears throat> so in the idea, motivation is also important. Like, what is important as well as why it is important. Right, so have covered the idea, then problem specification, uh, you define the problem in a specific manner, right? And then you go about approach, like designing your system architecture, so that when you go about implementation, you have a big picture, what you are doing, as well as, so you see two things here, design and implementation level. So design is basically at a bigger picture, at a, at a bigger level, what your system looks like. Implementation is, how you are actually implementing yeah? Then you go about technologies, what technology you're gonna use. Then you decide your milestones and responsibilities, like if it is a team, right? Team of three people. Who is doing what when it comes to implementation? When, you, when it comes to implementation for the whole system. Then comes the implementation, how you're gonna go about implementing, what tools you are using, what technologies you are using, and then how you are really implementing, what algorithms you are designing, right? Like what APIs you are using, things of that nature. Then evaluation, how you evaluate the project, and references, you provide some references, and then, um, for example, you are using certain API. Now, in order to justify that it is great, it's just, it does a wonderful job, you can provide an app in there. Hey, this is what I have used. Uh, here's a reference. It's in the Everything is available on here. And then you go about the report and demo presentation as the outcome what you accomplish. So I mean, it's a great thing when you reach the point of money. Got a presentation, right? So we go uh, one by one in each of them, and what are the key points that you need to remember in each of them? And after finishing this proposal discussion, then we will move on to uh, discussing the default project. Uh, how to default projects. So before that, um, so anyone, uh, like last class we discussed, anyone uh, uh, came up with uh, his own idea for doing a project? No? <laughs> so do you want to do you want to discuss with us? We we have a slot for that too. If you have your own idea, and if you have slide or so, if you want to present in one or two slides. What's your idea? Like, what's the big picture? Uh, they would love to hear. No, it's not my idea. Sure. Because it's like, okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. As well as so, uh, after this, I'm also going to discuss the default project. But other than that, like in previous uh, three classes, you are going through like uh, different projects, like the bigger research projects which are going on. And in each of them, <coughs> what are the opportunity for you to participate? Right? As you saw, like I was discussing uh, Twitter's. Uh, like last, like what could be applied for Twitter, or in a uh, in a big sense, say social computing. Similarly, remote present like sensor computing. So in those bigger areas, if you want to do a project too, that's also uh, possible. So let's start with uh, one by one. Like what is the idea? What problem specification? What are the things for you? What are the key things that you should remember when you are designing this problem? Yeah. So idea. It's a motivation to solve an interesting problem. So. Uh, for an example, how Google search engine was designed. Right? There was a motivation um, that they wanted to find 
fast, like all the pages in them really, really fast, right? That was, uh, that actually differentiated Google from other, other competitors. And it was doing uh, what you wanted, so everyone was very thrilled and that's how. So, but this, uh, there was a key motivation, right? So, there was a motivation to solve an interesting problem. So, an example could be here, let's take a topic search on Twitter. You go on Twitter and search, uh, like last night's debate, right? So, 20 till in elections, you read the side button, and then all the sorts of um, um, microblog posts, they will become the tweets will be yeah, just like results, document results. Right? Same way for Google, you go and search. So, that's a bigger thing. What's the big picture? What is the big problem we are solving? What's the motivation behind it? So, that's the part of IT. So, when, when you will be writing your report, in that report, you will be mentioning each of these sections, like, what was your big idea? What was the big picture? Like, what motivated you? And like, that's the motivation. Then you go about problem specification, concretely defining what you are going to do. So, like, it's, it's in a way, it's a presentation of like how this is a big, big, big picture, this idea, but this is in uh, a specific way I'm going to solve this problem. So that's a way of presenting what you're thinking, like is a, what is the big picture for us, and like how you are trying to attempt to solve it. So that's why it's a means of presentation for solution, how you're gonna, like, this, is, this is what you're gonna really solve it. And in this form, so how, so in this form. So for example, uh, for a search problem, you're going to design a user interface for a search engine, where the, on the back end, you have where user inserts the keyword for search and display uh, tweets as a result. So that's as a like we are doing as a project. Like this is a problem. This is this is like one line thing I have for my project. So this is the, uh, that will go in the what is your problem space? Then you go about approach. Right, um, very important part. Right. So we define the problem, but how are we really gonna solve it? So there comes the how part of the problem. That like how we are solving it. And in that, the biggest uh, point is. To think, uh, so always uh, one suggestion I'm going to give you guys is, uh, so some of you have already taken software engineering, so you know that already. Um, it always helps to organize what we are doing, right? That's what you do. You, the software engineering, the first step is like your specification you provide. So what it helps, it helps in organizing what you're going to do. The same way, in our approach, system architecture is the key. We have to have a system architecture before you start designing a web application system. So, uh, um, what what do, what do you mean by really uh, system architecture? Then? So, it, and also two labels: design and implementation. Right. So, it's an organization of your tasks presented in a diagram, in a diagrammatic form, so you understand what are different components of my system. Right? So, for example, in a search engine example that we are talking about, um, there will be a index on the back end, there will be a UI component in the front end, right? Which, so, client side is talking to the uh, server side, and in the server side, you may have databases, you may have file databases, or relational databases, right? Things of that nature. So, how each of these components fit in the uh, overall system. So, that gives us an idea of the flow, how the process flows. So I think uh, most of you, I think all of you have taken already programming class, where you would have seen these flowcharts, right? What are they? Process flow, right? So the same way, here when you're designing a bigger system, there also it's important to kind of create the flowchart. And the flowchart here is in the means of architecture. The architecture item here, uh, it's going to be at two levels, when design and implementation level. Design, like the at the higher level, like this component, uh, like a black box. You don't talk about, you just talk about big, big boxes. For example, in a search engine, well, here's my crawling box, which is crawling all the web pages. Here's my chunking box, crawling, so in, uh, by using the output of uh, crawling, and this is how it is in chunking. Now, you are not at this design level. You don't talk about inside that which algorithm you are using, which API you are using, things of that nature. It's a <coughs> bigger job, right? So that a person, so when you are conveying or presenting your whole world to someone else, um, it, it's the kind of you can think of uh, like a business diagram, like that. 
like uh, you are talking to some business group and you are explaining it. He doesn't understand what Agile is, right? He understands the big picture. So for him, what what is important for him? Design level data will be important. Okay, hey, this is my system design. So he can understand a little bit. Oh yeah, this is how the process flow. It will be the process flow. This one process flow works. And fourteen is both box. Right, and then. In the implementation um, level architecture, then we're going to talk about in each of these big, big black boxes, what is going to happen, how it is going to work, what kind of so, so um, let's take an let's take an example like text check, right? Or, so text checking module, what, how which algorithm is going to use, right? Stem, it's going to do stemming, right? Like it's going to chop out all these stop words from the content um, so that it can prepare the content for purpose of index steps, indexing, right? You don't want to index A or B words. <laughs> of course, you don't want to do that. So they are stop words. We'll talk about it like in detail in the next class. This for an example that I'm going to use this way. So you don't want to do that in general. So here, what you're going to do? We're going to talk about the algorithm and individual specific modules inside the this black box. That's our major task in the case of uh, implementation level design. Here, yeah, please feel free to stop me and ask questions. You know? uh, then you go to technologies. So, what are technologies? Right. So, um, in your implementation level, right, uh, what kind of technologies you are going to? To, when going to choose, right? So here, when you will be, uh, so when you will come to this level uh, of designing the architecture at the implementation level, right? At that point, you will get enough feeling what you are going to. Do. So that's why start from a step one, and by the time you reach here at the implementation level design, you get a feeling of how you, what technologies you're using. For example, JSP, OP. I think PHP will be good. I think I'm good at PHP. I can handle this particular uh, my black box in. Uh, this particular language very well. So things are very much. So what is the client side uh, scripting you are using? What are the server side scripting you are using? Right. So all of these things you studied in the past class, um, right? So all those classes, um, whatever learning you have, we're gonna use here. And what is like the hosting environment? Like you will be hosting your um, where your servers, where they are being hosted. Target, <coughs> right. For example, target server uh, for PHP just Apache. So, all right, one question. Anyone uh, understand what's the difference between Apache and Tomcat? Uh, Tomcat is one of the Java servers, but they're both essentially Apache at their core. Uh -huh. They're both web servers. Both web servers. Uh, Tomcat has been extended so that you can run. Very good. So Apache cannot handle it someplace where Apache. Apache is just like a web server middle and that just comes by serving this kind of uh, uh, engine which allows you to broaden across things. All right, so after that, important point, milestones and responsibilities. So remember from the first point, so from this uh, approach point, what we discussed, organization, right? Organization of your whole work, it's a very, very critical to deliver the things in time. Like if you're going for internships, if you're going anywhere, like after this, so this is the thing we wanna have you learn also during this project. So that after you go for a job or so, you understand what, what, what is really critical when you go for industry or so. It's very critical. We define what are the milestones for the project and what are the responsibilities for each of the team members. Because if it's a team project, so it should be clear who is doing what so that you know in, uh, it's accountable. Everything is accountable. And then we're going to discuss about implementation and evaluation. So milestones and responsibilities. Right. So you need to have like on a weekly basis what you are uh, going to um, check yourself. It's it's a check for yourself. In fact. Like okay, th this is where I am. I'm going to finish my project in five weeks. But in week one, right? <laughs> what is it that I am accomplishing? What is it week two I am accomplishing? So you get a feeling, you get a sense of uh, what I have really done so far. For example, in our system architecture diagram, right? So think of is it as at that level that when you are a design and uh, implementation architecture diagrams you create, right? What parts you are finishing at what points of time? You keep the checks, weekly checks. So it's very very important that you uh, you make sure that that happens. So the best way is like 
spent initially, so when your project is going to start, right? Initially, within one or two days only, you should have this thing done. That, hey, this is uh, my planning. That by week one, I'm going to finish my crawling part for our search engine uh, example, for example, what we did talking about. Um, checking part, I'm going to finish by second week. Then I'm going to, uh, third week, by, I'm going to finish the indexing part. Things of that nature, right? And make sure you make yourself accountable what time, how much time you're spending, how much time you need to, so you really get a sense of when you're going about designing a big system, right? It should be doable. You, you should be able to finish in like a specific given time. Right? So, and that is what it will be. And also about the uh, team members, when you're talking about the responsibilities, so when you finish each of the uh, milestones at that point, you should have accountability who, uh, which, uh, like, whoever is doing what part, which has it finished, not finished, right? So it helps. It helps essentially who is lagging it. And sure. so if you need to help them, you help them and bring them on the same plane so that all, like, one of the team members team succeeds. Yeah. Ultimate goal is team succeeds. So, uh, all right? Uh, then we talk about implementation and evaluation. So in the implementation, what are the things important? that whatever we propose in the implementation architecture right now, right? We're gonna go and implement using the technologies we've already thought of when we're designing the implementation. So technology like I'm using JSP, I'm using PHP, I'm using JavaScript, right? So, and I'm using all of them, like client side, server side. So I can think of the in the organized way. What is the client side scripting? What is the server side scripting I'm using? What is the hosting environment I'm using? All right, using all of them. All right, when I talk about um, using server side scripting JSP, if I need to use an API, what is that API I'm going to use? Yeah, like if I, uh, for example, algorithm for chunking, what algorithm I'm going to use? Yeah, then for indexing, what are the are there any existing tools? So the best strategy is when you when you this, uh, think of that when you create an implementation diagram and think of various possibilities, Google. That's the best thing. Google. For any specific thing, write down on your paper step one, step two, step three. Uh, for each of those black boxes, what you guys need to do, like you need to do chunking. So in the chunking, you need to stop words. You need to have uh, the the stamping for that, right? So, I mean, things of that nature. So, wait, is there anything which is handling it? So, in the next next class, I'm going to talk to you about um, such thing. So, then, like, for example, for this having algorithm. So, you don't need to implement it. If it is available, you can use that API, right? But you don't have to use <coughs> codes, like, um, the full complete code and all that. I mean, because then, what is it that you have? It will be nice. So, it, uh, using the API is a good strategy. So, use APIs and get your tasks. So like, we'll, we'll provide you um, more details in the next next time, the lab indexing class uh, about this UC and the GPI, UC API, solar uh, engine and such. So in the project, the part project is coming out, so I'll talk to you a little bit. Right, so you get a sense like what, what do we really mean by implementation uh, phase, what we are going to, so we are going to implement each of the things in our implementation level, just that about architecture, for each of those uh, modules in each of the black boxes, which are in the design level architecture. Gotcha? So, that's implementation. Then we need, to, we need to think about, oh, well, I designed this system, but this is working well. Right? So, evaluation, important, right? Uh, you, you can code very efficiently, but um, what we, if we didn't take care of a particular use case? Right? So, in that situation, but evaluation one point. So we got to make sure that what are the test cases that I'm going to use for evaluating. For example, if I'm using a search, when I'm uh, doing a search for an engine project, in that case, I should be able to evaluate with respect to certain queries, like whether it is giving the right results or not. Right? So on Google, if we are searching about uh, up in the air, so up in the air, is it talking about a movie or is it talking about something else? Things of that nature, right? When you're talking about a particular um, query, you should give the relevant results. So that way you can know it's a good Alright, so then comes the point of references. Yeah, so uh, references, I pointed you out uh, the appendix. So it is important that if you uh, use some APIs or so, so that's documented. Now, uh, why it is important? Let's ask this question uh, to ourselves also. 
you may be doing this project right now, right? And maybe two years down the line, you come up whenever you're doing a job or so. It comes, similar thing, problem comes to you. Now, can you recall everything? No, right? So, that's why it helps. Documenting, that's why it is the reason it helps. So, in uh, the references, put the references, what you can use from where and what is the purpose, so that you get the motivation when you're checking. Right. So, then comes the important part, the report and the demo presentation. So, in the reporting, um, you need to describe how your approach is, right? So that's the major part, right? So the, the best way is like just follow this order, whatever order we just went to. We define what is the motivation, how is the problem that you're gonna solve, then what is the approach you're gonna take, like uh, uh, system level uh, design, like this, sorry, design level architecture diagram, here's the implementation architecture that, uh, diagram, then you go about uh, what are the algorithms, like the sorry, technologies that you are using, right? And then you go about uh, explaining the implementation phases, like you want to talk about specific modules in it, for example, uh, using this API or using this algorithm, this is how I solve uh, so and so problem for, you know, while I was creating or implementing this module. Right? <coughs> that gives sense to you also, uh, to the same uh, point I told you, like two years down the line, if you want to, uh, let's suppose, use all the insights, all the hard work you're gonna use here, um, back again. So why don't we get to reuse it? So make get so make sure you don't. Forget. And so you get it later. Yeah. So should this be in text paragraphs or bullet points or does it matter? Good point. So keep a bullet point and then just below it a little description. So it's understanding. It's understandable. Okay, this is the module which is using the AI and this how this that was using and things like that. So you you describe. What you did, and then system design exper and like experiments. If you are playing with the experimentation, like uh, some of the projects will include experimentation too. Like for example, for evaluation, if you're doing uh, certain experimentation, you can utilize okay, this is a query, this is the results I got. Here's a snapshot for both of them. Right, and then anyway, uh, the second point, the demo and presentation, you are definitely going to um, show us the demo and presentation. So uh, that's going to be important. So in the demo presentation, what you are going to show us is uh, one small presentation if you have, or like the demo or uh, accomplishment you did in your project. Like uh, if it is a search engine uh, project, you show us the results. You show the interface, you show us the results. Yeah. And if you have an analytics um, project which is based on some research and analytics, like right? R&D, so in that, in that, you show us the results, uh, what results, you are going to, um, what results you achieve, basically. This is how we, and uh, the reason, that's a central over there. But then, then why you achieve that? Because it's inadequate, so the project is about research, so there you're gonna talk about the reason and why. Make sense? So, after that, important. So, what are the deadlines? Yeah, very important. <laughs> because you have to decide um, when to start, how to. So um, I will suggest, in fact, today uh, or like, like today next week, think about it, form the teams if you are going to do a team project, right? Think about the ideas, what you have. If you don't have ideas, then you, you may end up with like this default project or uh, the project that we guys were discussing, like research um, based projects, right? So if you want to do that sort of project, it's also possible. So for proposal, right? In proposal, you should have all the idea, what you're gonna uh, do, system architecture, what you're gonna implement and all, like design and basically implementation of your architecture. Yeah, you're gonna describe your approach, this is what you're gonna do. And then, um, uh, so this, that should be basically submitted as well. Don't you, do you wanna add anything? So problem specification idea, and like design uh, level and implementation level um, system architecture. Both of them. For proposal? Yeah. I have all the sections, each of them will fill out as much as possible. As much as possible. So like, uh, even like implementation evaluation, like uh, the evaluation, so yeah, evaluation is critical. That, that should be there. So like, you, you get a sense of how you can evaluate. But like in implementation, also, also if you have if some idea already, like this is the thesis, this is the algorithm, this is the ideas I'm going to use, put it in. 
so that you know it's it's very when the things are concrete you do things faster so you will finish up your things in the milestone and very very critical the timeline the timeline yeah it's very important so please make sure that you put your timeline how you're gonna finish up the things milestones yeah and responsibilities as well who are the team members who is doing what so that's accounting then yeah so proactive approach come up with an idea yeah talk to your friends form a team then come into whatever communication meetings you do so make sure yeah uh, so that is the reason uh, why why milestones and responsibility part is important so that accountability is always there who is doing what and if he committed he didn't do it so you know that um, who didn't do it he can be married pointed out that, yeah, hey, you didn't finish because the team but you didn't finish I think so. within one week it should be very clear whether the team is going to work or not. So don't yeah. drag this along. It's possible that somebody says, "Oh, I have, a, uh, I'm working full time and I don't have time to meet." Then just don't engage, in, you know. And then if that won't work, for the team, uh, you know, say, "Sorry, this team is not going to work." Uh, so if people have different constraints about, for example, a meeting, uh, if the if there's a team of three and uh, three of you cannot find. Uh, three time slots in a week to meet, possibly at least you know two three times a week. Then uh, that's not the right thing. Uh, you know, just don't. Uh, uh, and so cut your losses earlier. Send uh, to the teammates. So this is not going to work. And, uh, also, uh, you have like, there's a choice of people coming up with synergistic skills. Or people coming up with um, uh, no skills or little skills and um, uh, highly skills. Now, uh, the first one will probably work. The second one may not work. Um, uh, in uh, our assignment three, uh, majority actually uh, say the assignment is not hard at all or easy. Uh, quite a few submitted ahead of the time. And there were three to five people that were always in the room. Uh, uh, seeking help with not even uh, enough knowledge about syntax and other things. These people, uh, you know, if, if, if that is, you know, that would be a challenge. How would you do the project if you had problem with assignment three? I don't know how would you do the project. And in this case, the best you can do, uh, given that you have chosen to remain in the class, is to uh, probably uh, seek out people with your level of skill and uh, try to do default project. So the non-default projects, uh, that is not to say default project is much easier, but at least you have a control over uh, what you are doing and you can uh, you know, sort of choose to fail uh, in doing so and it will be clear that you, you are failing in doing so. Um, uh, but uh, if you uh, decide to work on projects like Twitter or Windows or um, uh, the semantic sensor web or any of those things, then um, you need to be more confident about your skills. And um, uh, yes, you have mentoring, very good mentoring, uh, good guidance. But uh, that would not be replaced by, you know, uh, nitty gritty programming help. So, you know, uh, each of these uh, guys would be available to you to help you define the things, to go, you, go with you on the API, help you design the whole thing. But you have to know to implement it. So they would, you do, I don't want you to go to them with the same text problem, uh, you know, on, on a minor error problem. With a substantial problem or the choices, architecture, technology, you know, decisions, yes, that kind of have to be available. So um, the other very important thing is that you certainly cannot do the project if you uh, choose not to do anything in the first thing next lesson. Meaning, project starts now. Uh, actually, it has already started. Since we started talking about uh, the ideas, the project work has started. Already. Except for the default project where we would have a uh, class, the second class next week. But this, uh, the class after this one is midterm. Uh, uh, and basically, the agenda for the midterm is whatever uh, we have uh, covered in the classes client side programming, server side programming, all this kind of stuff. Uh, if you are uh, not very confident, then review the lectures presentations, video, whatever you want to go through those things, but it will be based on that. Okay, so uh, the basic fundamental things will be somehow covered in the class and that is what will be tested on. Uh, 
And that is 30 marks, yes. What's your exam format? Like, is it multiple choice, fill in the blank, short answer? Um, like, what is going to be made up of? It will be um, a variety of the things, but um, uh, a, a, a typical exam question would be a piece of code and either explain something or add something to me or find an error in that. Okay. Um, it will be open book, open, uh, you know, uh, PC. So you can bring your PC and uh, you can, you know, look up at the web or whatever uh, to if you need a syntax help. So I don't want people to, by making it closed group where you have to remember syntax and uh, I don't want that as an issue. So you can consult a book or something whether there is, you know, for syntax or something. But uh, it should be known that if you have not read the material or not the material, you won't be able to answer those things. So, uh, I don't know why it's planning there, but you have planning multiple questions. You should be best to like explanatory questions, some explanatory questions, some give you the situation, and then you figure out what is the best, like we are talking about, uh, like server side scripting or time side scripting, you give you the situation, and then you, we ask you what you're doing. And the, we'll try to keep answers, uh, we'll try to ask the questions uh, which have uh, hopefully a short and concrete and precise answers and not long essays. Uh, so uh, that, that makes it for clarity in reading also, that makes it for, you know, uh, uh, so you understand the basic concept or uh, then hopefully you should be grasped it. Be one sentence, two sentences, find an error, these are the questions. Um, so, um, and then after that, uh, in the second class, uh, we will uh, go through uh, the lexing related uh, lectures. So that will be part of, part of, part of our last lecture. But also, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, your team must be formed, and your proposal must, at least draft must be given. We will give you ability to further revise it. It's a living document, but it will be looked at uh, uh, after the 18th. It will be looked at whenever we choose and, and uh, give a grade to it as a part of the overall grade. So 10% or 20% of the grade would be for what we see by that time, the clarity or that stuff. Um, if you come to ask for advice from me or other assistants, uh, we'll say, well, show me what is on your project page and what are the issues that you will log and describe and where you are stuck, things of the nature. So make sure that that's a, that is maintained. That would have to transform into project info. The proposal would morph into or you can create different copy yourself, your team has a choice which you want to choose, but you have a project report which will also be graded. But that means the grading for the proposal and the report itself is a minority of the grade. Much larger chunk is for actually doing the work that works as promised. So the important thing is to make sure you promise what you can deliver upon and we will try to judge you by your ability to match the promise among one thing. But there will be variations uh, to some extent. If you aim too high and you clearly showed huge potential, you may be linear. If you aim too low and you did not uh, meet it, you will be very harsh on that. So clearly there is a uh, pros and cons of choosing a uh, low, uh, you know, target as well as versus high target. Right? So an outcome, how much have you been able to do is very important. Uh, team dynamics is very important. Being able to collaborate with the team is extremely important. Uh, don't uh, you know, say, let's make this thing. No, don't do that. Let me say from the very beginning, this is a recipe for failure. You can't say this thing. You have to set time. Let can we meet at 7 o'clock? And anybody who does not shop it within 15 minutes of the time means that that person lost. Three times a person cannot make the meeting time in the commitment team or the team has to oust that person. And also you are welcome to talk to me. And we'll see what we can do about it. Right? So, um, uh, you know, everybody, your teams, uh, teammates' time is precious. So you don't show up at the promised time. That's, that's really a serious issue. I mean, that is very similar uh, to what happens in the company. I'll give you an idea, a general idea. In a company, uh, an employee would typically cost, after putting the benefit or anything, up for $50 an hour. 
Maybe more. Depends on the It costs $100 an hour. There are um, uh, 10 people. You call a meeting and there are 10 people. One person is 10 minutes late. The nine have come in. And so the meeting starts 10 minutes late. 10 percent times 10 minutes is 100 minutes of time wasted. 100 minutes times the hourly cost is the time wasted for the right? So these are substantial costs. And uh, that, along with the fact that others may feel that, hey, we are, we are coming timely uh, in a timely manner, uh, this guy does not feel as well. And that doesn't take us seriously. And that creates dynamics in the system where things don't work, you know, in the team that doesn't work. So be very respectful, not just respectful be, you know, in the sense of um, uh, talking nicely, but respectful in the sense of you know, respect others' time also. So these are very important in school. Um, if you can figure out a way to work on Google Hangout and uh, Skype video chats and phone chats, that's fine too. If somebody wants to join, you know, if that works for your team, that is fine. There are a lot of projects that happens where the you know, teams are globally distributed today. US, China, India, this is a many, many projects of the kind. If you want to do work that way, that's fine. There are many companies that allow you to work from home also and participate in the meeting from home. That's fine too. You must have what must happen and you should be accepted with your time too. Um, any other questions? Yeah, so uh, for example, if the proposal does not come through, and then within the proposal, people actually doesn't you know, start working immediately. You should raise yellow flag and red flag, and uh, you'll be set up for failure. You cannot do the project in the last four months, so four weeks. Just uh, The other, yes? Um, I have a question, but um, you said that you have to have
and, 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 and be more matter of the fact, kind of in their writing. Uh, in terms of presentations, so presentations of the team will be 15 minutes or something along that line. So not long. Five, maximum five uh, 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 slides, let's say. Uh, well, I, it depends on how you make the slides. So you can, you can have a big slide, one word per slide also. That's a style of presentation. So then you can have more. But basically five to ten slides kind of thing uh, combined with the demo. It is very critical. So here's what happens. You promise a very specific thing to do, and you do it, and you demo it. Then you and you have a write up. Then, uh, then I think it's easiest for everyone, for you, for us to pay you, and, and usually the outcome is positive. Things become sticky when you could not achieve what you promised, and you could not demo it. That means now we have to this well into partial credits. Things become even more. Um, uh, challenging when uh, somebody then starts claiming, but I did my part this time, not going to. Then again, it become, then, then I have to conduct an interview, ask them to uh, walk through the code, show me part, you know, how that part of the code work, you know, is this tested, should work, and give that person high credit or full credit while the other person would suffer. So the idea would be to uh, take the things, uh, you know, and achieve it and demonstrate it. Now, here is very important thing. Suppose you guys have made a schedule where you would have implemented all the uh, components of your system one week before the due date. The chance that you would be able to dem give demo is less than 5%. Almost none. Unless you are doing incremental testing, unless your interfaces between the modules are very clear, unless the data uh, flow between the modules has been tested. Unless the message between server and client has been documented in writing ahead of the time, and that the server guy can test his software without the client's guy, uh, you know, client are completely working vice versa, and vice versa, you will not succeed. You have to do incremental testing. You have to do you know development and you know. Things we can't say, oh, okay, here are the three parts, go and develop, come back one week before the due date and like put together that won't work. It doesn't work. You would not have uh, test data must be done right now. In within the two, three weeks of the proposal, you must know what are the what is data that you will test for. It should be documented, it should be in a file somewhere if possible, or point it down on the web this is what the data. So uh, you have to uh, hand walk through your design, architecture, and work. If you don't do that and just start coding that, that's a risk. Uh, there are very few people who can do that. Does each person in the group demo their part of the project? No, it can be a combined demo if everything works together. That means you did it. Then you don't. Uh, but, I mean, you'll be all present and you'll be able to. You know, three of you are there, then uh, you will give it collectively together. Um, it may be like one person gives use two slides, another person gives two slides, another person gives two slides. So everybody should be given visibility and opportunity to present himself or herself. Um, and and, uh, and uh, the overall team success, uh, it, so successful team will celebrate overall team success and success of each of them by the fact that the whole thing worked. And the teams that don't work, they would kind of, you know, uh, you know, one person say, I did my part, I did this, but this thing, uh, you know, guy is saying, I did my part. Yeah. <coughs> also, the clear on people who can just talk and not do it. That should be also very, uh, decided very upfront. You know, when you are, you know, so you don't know the person, you're just coming for the first time together, then again, uh, you say, here is a deadline and you did not do it. Well, I think it's perfectly fair to put log it in your proposal and say the missed deadline is by this person. And so you, you did your part, but somebody else in your team did not do it. So in case there is a, and I don't think this is wrong. You want to, um, A, give that person who is not keeping up with the pace opportunity to catch up. If so, then everything is forgotten. Not, then you need to be able to 
say, okay, now uh, only these two of us will continue the project and we will figure out what you do. Other important thing, if those of you not done group project, how many of you have done a team project before? <coughs> this is wonderful. Well, there are very few that have not done team project. So for those of you who are not in the project, doing a team project is, um, so if you, if you take three parts by three people, the work, some of these three is significantly smaller than what it takes to get the whole, all the three parts working together. Okay. So um, the, there is a lot of time wasted in group dynamics, in the interfaces and so on and so forth. As opposed to work project doing project individually. So when you think in terms of the time you have to devote, account for the fact that there will be a lot of extra time that will be gone in educating others, in sharing others, in communicating with others, uh, enjoying or testing with the other sport, so and so forth. It can make very much better in the sense that um, uh, if you look at it from other perspective, it's very quite possible that people have innate sense, server side, client side, you know, interfaces versus uh, scripting versus Java, and that way you can combine the strengths and make the whole thing work. So if you can figure out a way to uh, leverage individual strengths, that is very good. That's why most of the projects are uh, majority of the projects in the industry are group projects. Almost. 90, 95% of all the work in industry is uh, done by a team. Team can be small, sometimes three, four people, sometimes team can be as much as 10, 12, 15. Yes? We have an idea for a project. Uh, can we stop up at 380 and just bounce it off of you and see if, uh, if we're in that right ballpark? And I'm how sorry, much scope? Can you start project work? Can we ask you if uh, our idea for the project, the proposal, is uh, close to what you are looking for? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have three types of projects. The default project, the idea that you come up on your own and propose it, and uh, uh, you know, join one of these uh, other projects. Can more than one team join the project? Because, I mean, it, maybe one team might not do it well, and the other team might. Uh, they, it will all depend on uh, uh, both of them are welcome to talk, but uh, there is only a limited capacity on our side also. So if everybody wants to work with Windows, it's not going to be possible. And uh, typically, one, only one or two, you know, team can work. Now there are going to be exceptions. For example, there is a graduate student who um, uh, is going to. Um, work on PIDOS and she already knows what she's going to do because there's already a past interaction. Although for the grading purpose, she also have to do the formal <coughs> thing, make sure it is clearly documented, make sure that that is done for the course and not part of other duties and so on and so forth. But uh, there may be uh, cases where um, uh, uh, more likely uh, there, there are a number of undergraduates as well as the students here that, have, that already know some people in the noises center. Uh, in my group, and so uh, they may already know about these projects one way or another, and uh, then it is not necessary that you have three-person group. There is this, you know, very specific things that they're going to do, and then they can be a single or two-person project. But indirectly, it is a multi-person project because they are collaborating with the, uh, uh, the project team itself. But these are the people who are typically. Um, uh, uh, fairly self-sufficient, so they're not going to get too much help. They're going to get help in defining the stuff and, you know, isolating the part that they're going to do and how that's going to be incorporated into the overall system and such. So uh, there will be people, you know, there will be projects of that. It is a project presentation saying we did this, 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 but it is not, um, and, um, uh, it is not, a, you know, because I can't have all of you sitting here and one person going to each uh, your code. That, that is not, uh, it works, and also that's not a practice ever in an industry in such right? 
So if we have to go and look into your code, uh, we'll have to ask you as part of your final exam, come and explain your code. If you ever suspect that you could not have developed your code, we'll certainly do that. Uh, if your code is not working and we need to give you partial credit, credit we'll have to do that. If uh, your the whole project is working, nobody has any complaint, I have not heard anything, the project report is there, the presentation about what it does is there, we might not even look at your code. Those are the benefits of success. <coughs> Anything else? But remember, I can't stress enough. Uh, you really have to front load this. Remember, many of you have other courses. You have finals for them, and you'll be preparing for them, and you'll be competing. If you're competing project work against final, this will be a problem. Something will lose, right? It's your deal, you know, and that will lose. So try and uh, you know almost think, the front load it, and think that um, you know go very aggressively in the project. Other thing you will find is that most likely this is going to be much more work than you think it is. <coughs> Those of you who are already uh, good, for example, those of you who do not have problem with uh, assignment, can't also rest easy because uh, you know this is something meaningful, something substantial you're going to do, something you're going to collaborate on possibly. Plus, they should take the opportunity anyway to push hard so that they can have something very memorable and then hopefully show off to future employers or. Um, so, next week, you know, we have an exam and then we have one class. After that, all the classes are going to be project meetings here. And you guys are all going to come here. After that, we have some more classes. There are some more classes, uh, but those classes can be shortened uh, if people need it to uh, get into projects. But there will be at least <coughs> four classes at the end, maybe five, where we won't have any presentations. Uh, all the teams will meet here, and uh, two or three of us will be here to help answer questions or guide you. Or
very interested in seeing that it is equitable. Suppose the team is working very well, suppose all everybody is likely to get A grade, let us say, at least for the project part. I would expect that they are doing roughly equal work, and, you know, that nobody is doing more than 50% of the work in a, of the 100% of the team person project. So we would like to see that. Uh, and so it's a fair distribution. Each of them um, uh, need to be able to say I did something interesting and significant and I contributed to that and I learned something. Yeah, you know, because here you, I mean, I really, I'm not looking for a project where you're doing something that you've already done before. That's not what you do. Solar is for purpose of using um, 
what about destination and showing up. So in your this first phase of the project, default project, when you're creating the search engine, what it has, essentially has to do is it need to crawl first. So we will take a example of Noesis website so that it will be easier for uh, when you will be doing evaluation. So you go crawl the Noesis website and you configure the solid to index the document crawl language, right? Which is our crawling um, tool. Crawl that and you configure the next index. Uh, sorry, solid to index the documents. So two parts then crawling that indexing. Them. Make sense? And then we come to find some text queries on solid interface using the default solid interface uh, admin interface. Now, why we are doing the phase one? Let me tell you the philosophy also. We are doing it so to make you understand how this crawling and how this indexing is done and how really a, a, a dummy system, you can say a, a really um, like a testing. So it's like a test. So that's why we are making you do uh, using the solar, so that you get a feeling of um, how the results will be looking like. When you will be going to phase two and three, uh, once you got enough understanding of how to, you know, uh, do this basic part of crawling, indexing, and then like uh, find the queries like on that phase, then we will move to phase two and phase three, where you will be, sorry, where you will be doing the uh, stuff of actually going, pulling the data, showing up the results. So that actually hangs on on the web information system. So um, in the phase one, just to make one more point, um, so three parts, right? First step, match crawling. Second part, solid indexing. Third part, the finding some text queries to check whether it works or not on the interface. So that means that side of the step. Now this uh, uh, checking the test, uh, using some test queries using the solar interface, that part will be replaced in the phase two and three with our interface our uh, way of pulling the data on. Get it? And one thing for graduate students, which will be extra here, is uh, um, they need to investigate the tuning of the parameters. Yeah, graduate students. Uh, that will be additional. That's not for undergrad. They need to test, if they tune the parameters, how the results might be changed. They need to justify the reports on And once you take that part, once you finish the phase one, you move to phase two. And in the phase two, there comes the important part. So Solar was in phase one, Solar was taking care for us um, when we were finding the test queries. And in the, on the interface, we are finding the test queries. We are going on the back end, on the server side, and they are pulling the data uh, for us, what is needed in the right way. Now, in the phase two, instead of let Solar do it, we will create our interface. We need to create client side, we need to create server side which actually goes and talks to this black box. Pull the results, and then show on the view. Get it, task clear. Black box there, you create the server side, you create the client side, show the results. Right? So, in the phase two, step one, what you do is, you create a circlet, which takes query from the user. So you created the uh, user interface with a small like Google, or like Bing, or any other search engine. Everyone has a box, right? Create that box. A user instead of query, query goes on the back end, on the and the back end server side. So the server side script a survey. A survey understand that what came to me. Once it understands what came to it, then it gonna process it. So the processing need to happen here. What the processing step two? The internal port should connect to solar using the solar client libraries, fire the appropriate query, get back the results, and then construct the HTML pages return to the browser. Make sense? Once user sent us some query on your uh, from the client side, it came to the server side, and in the server side you have the servlet which is getting okay what was what is that query? Take this query and send to the black box. What is the black box here? The uh, indexer, whatever indexing mechanism the solar did for us. We will talk to it using it has an API, right? Everyone understand the concept of API? Excellent. I just wanted to make sure I'm sure you <laughs> use it. Right? So you use the API and get the result corresponding to the query terms. Once you got those results uh, corresponding, corresponding to the query terms, you give those results in a presentable form to the client side. Then only it will be able to show, isn't it?
No, 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 no. You're not doing like work testing, pipe work testing. No, no, no. I think yeah, I think no, no. It's not. I'm saying black box as a uh, like in a general sense way, and when we say black box, when you don't know about what is going inside and like that, right? So just to make the con like uh, concept simplified, I said black box. So it's not black box testing. It's a good question. Black box is how it works, not the actual. Like uh, right, like inside really, yeah, the things of that nature. You will understand that. Um, so why I'm using the term black box right now is because uh, we didn't teach you the web indexing class. So after your midterm next Thursday, we will talk about web indexing whole, like how those internal parts of the black box are working. So then I want to use the box. Right now, this is the reason I'm using. And in that, what is essentially there? It essentially, the part of financial solar, which is the, it has the call information, chunk that and indexes that. That's the part is there in the, uh, that particular black box. So in the phase two step, two, what we are doing, we are getting the query from the user, once we got the query from the user, uh, corresponding to the query, we are asking the API of the black box. Right? The A solar, give me corresponding to this query, give me the results so that I can send to the UI. Once you get that, you need to uh, formulate it in a way which can be presentable on the UI. So in the phase two, you will just send an HTML. So create server-driven HTML pages, and uh, so appropriate query, get back the results, and then construct the HTML pages to return to the browser. That's our case. So I'm very clear. In the phase one, we were testing queries on the interface of Solar. In the phase two, it's our interface. It's not Solar interface where we'll be testing our queries. Clear? Yeah. Make sense? Okay. For graduate students, again. So, um, undergrads bonus, yeah, if they want to do it, but like for, it's for graduate students only, they need to return the XML um, from the survey and use the XSLD to show it. You have studied it already in the past class. Yeah, so yeah, for graduate students, they have to do it. And if undergrads do it, I can find it. It's a good hands on, they can do that too. And they'll get extra point for it. Clear? What is, what is the key uh, point in the phase two? Creating our own interface, not using solar interface, creating our own interface, and returning the output in HTML pages. Key point. Gotcha. Let's go to phase three. So phase three. Here, um, let's. Yeah. So I'm trying to follow this. Phase three. We we need we need to, which is an example. Create our own our own interface. We go to the black box of data, whatever, and you know, send the query. The query back, and it'll present it in the HTML. Yes. So send the query to the, uh, the black box, the black box basically the solar APIs, get the results from there, show on the UI using HTML. Phase three, it is important. Phase three is basically the edge interface. So you guys learned the edge and JavaScripts, right? So instead of, uh, the only difference between phase two to phase three is how the output is returned to the user interface. So that what we wanted is essentially how uh, I mean uh, to enhance your understanding of how this you know this client side programming works. So that was our motivation um, from phase two to phase two. In phase two, you were simply doing a step of sending the HTML page. Here, instead of sending the HTML page, uh, what you will do is you will create a JSON sort of format and then send it on the UI so that edits can handle it and display it in a meaningful. So what is the difference uh, phase two to phase three? Anyone can explain you from your last class what you had understood. What does Ajax does different from just returning an HTML? So one mechanism was just returning an HTML, right? In the phase three, the mechanism is using the Ajax. Anyone can explain me what is the difference? Returning a normal HTML would actually change things on the Ajax keeps it. Very good. So the first the phase two, what's going to happen is page will be reloaded. In the phase three, you want to reload it. So it will be very nice. Like when you will reach the phase three, and when it gets done, you will feel too happy. I can tell you that because the page won't be reloaded. <laughs> so it will be more like uh, you type the query and the response you submit it. As soon as you submit it, then the uh, response comes and it just displays it. It's like that, right? Make sense? So, I mean, that's the kind of uh, thing you have to do here. So, 
<coughs> step one that instead of returning HTML content from the server, return a JSON document. Okay. Then use JavaScript code in the front end to parse the JSON and dynamically create the web page within the browser. What are the key tasks? Anyone? Sorry, you didn't hear me. Oh, I'm asking what are the key tasks? Did you get the key task in this? Uh, from the uh, step two, do you get the key task? What you have to do? So in the HTML thing, what you're doing, you're constructing that whole thing, right? In this case, what's going to happen? The client thing, the JavaScript guy will be basically creating those tags and right on there. And you will just send the JSON output. So you will loop through the, basically, you know, that's what you're going to do. You parse that JSON, you parse that JSON, and display. Make sense? So that's what uh, it's about. The phase uh, three and bonus point. If you implement like other uh, useful features like autocomplete. Uh, everyone understand what's autocomplete? Yeah, as soon as you start typing barrack, it will also put a plan and show Obama. Think of it. So that's autocomplete. If you do that, that's the bonus point. Make sense? Okay. So let's move on to evaluation. Very, very critical. But we designed the system, but how do we know it's working right or not? Okay. So because that was the reason why, why we gave you uh, uh, Noesis website. So that you can also check, right? So if we the demo will be like uh, you have, and you will be showing us the demo, right? At that point, we'll ask you to um, do some queries, and you can by yourself also do some queries um, to really check whether it's working or not. So the mechanism of evaluation will be will be checking your output with respect to certain queries. And, you know, so the example would be you could go and check because it's going this website corresponding to a project team. Just type your term and see if the relevant pages are popping corresponding to that uh, particular project. Yeah, like social web. So whether the social web projects are coming up, social people pages are coming up or not. Yeah. Make sense? So uh, for grad students, again reminding as we saw in the phase one, uh, for them it's very, very critical. They have to do this tuning thing, how parameters are tuned with respect to configuration and how the results change is. They have, that's the critical for them. They have to do it. And so in the evaluation, yeah, so again, just going to the steps, like demo the functioning, function of the system, we'll check through some queries and explain uh, why you think the system is working fine. So you can produce some like statistics, how, and also show what were the statistics, what you cried, how much was the data, how much was the indexes, things of that nature. So basically, at the end of it, once you reach here, what, what is it that you learn? You learn the whole system of how a uh, web information system really gets designed. Uh, like how problem really works like a, in a search in a way. In a later phase of your life, if you want to do a web information system, instead of that, uh, the stored part, the index or there, you can have some databases and you can play with them. But still, you will learn three major parts, the three data architecture. What is client side? What is server side? And what really goes in the back end to support that processing on the server? Right? It makes sense. So, um, yeah, finally, code documentation. Again, two years down the line, if you want to use it, how will you use it? So, make sure you have your code documentation, put comments in your code so that you, by yourself, want to also understand the data. In the report, here is that these steps uh, you took to perform the base code to it. So, as already Lakshmi mentioned, how it's going to be. Um, yeah. So for grads, it's important again <laughs> add a section about different parameters and clearly state the last point, yes, uh, I think I should already be uh, clearly mentioned Make sense? So this is a default project. 
if you don't have anything, then this is what uh, you would like. Yeah, please go ahead. If, if we decided you to do a fault project, I'm assuming you still want us to do a proposal and... Yes, yes, everything. Yes, yes, yes. This is just a, uh, you can say, idea. This is our idea to give you um, if you don't have idea. So this is one option. So our Second, if you have... Yeah. So our proposal would be over this default project. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So this is just, we define your phase and everything, but you still have to formally create the whole uh, uh, document with the whole step, all the steps of the proposal. So our responsibility is my yeah. responsibility. Yeah, implementation, architecture, everything. Like here we're defining, but you have to be, that was the reason we, why we didn't give you the architecture. We don't want to, we don't want you to learn. You create for them. And people might have different, different ways. No, although there are, you can find public uh, you know, discussion of uh, such parts of these, uh, with some variations. You can learn from them. Makes sense? And so, yeah, we'll send you this PDF of the project, and you'll have this reference also in that you can install it. We talked about calling, indexing, and overall system. Yeah, and also, next to next class, after we met up, we're going to discuss in detail the black box. Alright, thank you. So that you went in, thank you